Okay. So, I guess the first thing, I've already told you this, but uh, the first thing is um, some, of the, some of the history really, and what is, what is Resmania and why we've done what we've done, is um, basically we, we did create, um, a few years ago, we created, uh, going back probably five years ago, we created some online reservation systems for car and property. And um, we basically uh, tried to satisfy everybody, and um, we found that it just uh, the, the old products were too inflexible, and that we couldn't um, basically change them. So we, two years ago, I basically said, right, that's it. We're going to write a brand new product that's modular and uh, that runs on all CMSs if we want it to, and um, we don't have to change the core code to uh, to make modifications to it. Um, and so it took us a year and a half to basically code this. Um, and uh, what we've done is we've created a framework reservation system that's modular that sits outside of Joomla. Um, it uses um, some of the latest like web technologies like the Zen framework and XJS. Um, and it, we can, even though the framework is outside of Joomla, uh, we can actually um, um, basically have native compatibility with the CMS. So. Um, I can actually show you uh, it running on Drupal. This is actually on Drupal. Uh, I'll just go back a bit um, before we start on that. Uh, and I'll just give you a quick demonstration on uh, Joomla before I show you the Drupal so that you know what to see, what to expect with the interface. So basically, uh, this is uh, Joomla 1.5.17, I believe. And um, this is the extension loaded into, into Joomla. Um, if we just fire it up from the Resmania menu, you can see it load. And you can actually see that it's it's rendered into Resmania, uh, into sorry, into Joomla, um, and it's it's not in an iframe or anything. It is completely. It's actually uh, using XJS as the as the the, the GUI, um, and this is a full AJAX GUI. So there's no um, page refreshes. So if I go and edit a uh, a unit. Now, a unit is um, uh, one of the rental items. You can actually see that when I move around um, any of these pages, uh, it's not doing a screen refresh. It's it's loading it up without without any uh, basically any page refreshes, which means that the interface is really quick to use. And once you've done the initial load, it's sending off the requests in the background to to get the data, and uh, and it's just quick and easy to use. So. Uh, we, we use uh, the Zend, I'll give you one of these actually. Uh, we use the Zend, fra Zend framework for PHP. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. Yep, okay, that no. uh, tells you some of the details. There you go. You. Would you like one of these? So um, it's basically, um, we've already started off with, a, with um, something that's proven with the Zen framework. So we've got something that's stable and reliable. Um, and our system's built on top of that. So it's, it's also scalable because um, we use Zen database drivers and things like that for the queries. Um, so it, those can be uh, applied to Oracle and all different types of databases. Um, so we'll, we'll keep going through the admin interface. Um, basically, uh, our, a unit is actually a rental item in Resmania. And um, the system is completely modular, which means um, we can, uh, we can actually do any type of reservation for, from a property to a car to an item to a person to, to CDs to tools, socks, <laughs> if you, whatever you want to rent. If you want to rent it, you know, it, it can do it. So um, what we do is uh, we have a module system, and I'll show you this now um, in the configuration. We have a modular system that allows us to basically uh, load in one of our a Resmania module. Uh, you can see here all of these are actually base modules, and this one is uh, is is one that I've just added in to demonstrate the, the module system. But basically, um, for things like uh, we have a price price system in here, daily prices. Um, if we want an hourly price system for our rentals, we can add in a module that will give us that functionality. Um, so, you know, for instance, cars uh, might be rented on a, an hourly or four hourly or an eight hourly or a daily rental. Um, 
So if, if you want that type of functionality, you literally just install the hourly module. So, uh, and I think um, it's the same for equipment rental, if you, know, if you want the hourly function. So you install that module, and that would give us um, the, the option to be able to change the price system. But there's also, um, we have this, this module here called the unit type module. And this, uh, this manages um, the types of rental items. So if it's a car or a boat or... Um, and that defines how the system basically loads up the, the forms for those. Um, I'll go back to the units now. The, the actual base system is really uh, orientated towards um, property rentals. So um, as it stands now, this, this is set up for property rentals, but uh, you have to be clear that it can do everything. It can do hourly and it can do cars uh, just by the modules that are loaded into it. So if we go into one of the units, I've set up a couple in here. Uh, we can see our unit type. I'll load that page. Uh, you can see it's set to the default at the moment, which is the base system. Um, and you can also see our prices, which is our price module. And the prices are set up for a daily price at the moment. So you can see this is really orientated to property rentals at the moment. However, uh, an hourly, the hourly price module would would load this up, allowing you to define a, a price band, a date range of when you want to apply those prices with you know, the prices you want to uh, allocate to one hour or four hour or whatever we could define on that module. Um, so I think um, that's units really and how, how it, uh, at the moment, is property. So we'll, we'll just run through some of this and I'll just demonstrate and show you the interface and how this works because there uh, were some really nice features in this. Um, I'll show you first of all the media manager. We have a built-in media manager that allows you to um, FTP all your images up into one place. So if you use shared media between all of your rental items and you, and you don't want to upload uh, image one by one, you can actually just dump all your images onto the server and it will just appear in this like global media manager. And then within our rental units, um, we can actually just use that media. So we can go into to our media manager, which is the unit media. And we can take images out of the, the global media manager. And we can do things like just drag that out and drop it into our unit media. And that's now available on that unit. It's, it's copied it over in the background so that it's, uh, it's made it just assigned to that unit. So this is um, unit blue this one here and so I've just added that unit in. Now if I want to assign the units to the front end website and the different areas on the front end website we've obviously got thumbs and main images in the slideshow and these are defined in this little tree on the right hand side and, it, and it's literally to, to reorganize these photos you literally just pick them up and, and, and move them around so let's, what I'll do is I'll allocate a new thumbnail image uh, we'll take uh, Italian coast and drop that onto our thumbs and then on the front end website so I'll just show you the front end now we'll just do a list with no parameters this is just the standard Joomla template and um, you can actually see now this is the first page that we get with Resmania and you can see that the, um, the, the list is now representing and showing the, the thumbnail that I've just assigned by dragging it over and dropping it onto that tree um, the other images, which will go back and forward between the front end pages. I'll just go to the more info page on the front end so I can demonstrate some of this, uh, of how it all hangs together. Um, you can actually see here, uh, we have um, a main image assigned here. I'll actually delete that one so that I can show you it working. And we'll copy over a new image. So we'll copy over this photo onto main. You can all see that okay. We'll just drop it onto main. And then on our front end website, that should be represented. There is actually an image setting for aspect ratio that's set off at the moment on this one. So I'll just change the config. This is, um, this is our image processing built into it, so we can actually decide on what size images we want. 
uh, some of the configuration settings. So we, we use sliders, but we also um, can override them and provide a manual setting. Uh, I think maybe that's the setting we want. Well, maybe I don't know. We'll leave it checked for the moment. Uh, while we're in the configuration, I'll actually just show you this quickly. Um, the licensing on uh, Resmania is, is done via license key. Uh, the actual software is free to download from a website for one rental unit. So you can download it and try it and develop your solution with it. And then if you, if you want to use it um, and you, want, you have more than one rental item, uh, you basically purchase a license key off of us. And you add the key in here and it will unlock. Uh, you can see here that this is set to 10 units. Uh, if I can do that. It's locked to the, the key is locked to the domain. If I can move that across so you can see that it's local host for me. Um, the license keys can be added to. So what we've done is we've created a really flexible price system that means that we don't have to set a fixed price, a really expensive software uh, price for the whole package. Uh, it starts off very cheap to buy you know, units and then you can just license it as you go. So um, I think uh, a 10, 10 license or 10 rental items Starts off at 90 euros, so they're 9 euros per rental item. And it's a one off, it's not a renewable cost. Um, so once you've licensed it, the license key is yours, and then you can add to that over time if you want more rental items. So uh, it's, it's really designed to be flexible for, for people, not without hitting them with a really high bill from day one. Okay? Um, so we'll go, back to, um, we'll go back to our unit in a moment, and I'll carry on explaining some of these these features before we move on to some of the other things. Um, we have Google Maps built into it, so um, this is actually a module, um, the locations module, and I'll show you the Google Maps working. Um, basically, let's just show you the module. Uh, modules in Resmania, the module really extends our base system. So the module can contain complete code for workflow, um, the GUI, the um, uh, parameters for how the, the program works for front end. Um, and then we have plugins which actually extend the modules. So for instance, uh, one example here is we have a locations um, module, this one. Um, and this adds uh, the option to add locations to units. So on a unit, uh, you can see we have a locations field. So it, it allows us to define um, coordinates and directions and an address. Uh, but we also have a plugin that, that has a dependency on the, um, and I'll just show you the plugins that are installed. So at the moment we have a GMAPS plugin, a Google Maps plugin, and that, it, that extends the functionality of locations. It provides GMAPS functionality, so I've got a configure option on, a configuration option, because I'm underneath configuration. And I've got a configuration option of, of allowing it to define my Google Maps key. And I, on the front end, I'll, I'll show you that working. So um, on here, we can click on Google Maps, and you can see it loads up the, if I've entered an address that it can find. Oh, no, oh, there you go. Yep, yeah, I've just got, I've got three bars. So you can see that it loads up a Google Map. Um, <clears throat> later on, uh, we will extend the, the Maps module, and things like uh, the locations, we'll go back to locations, um, this will show a pane, a panel on this right hand side with the Google map that we show on the front end and a movable pin so we can fine tune and things like that. But uh, I, I should explain that this only went to release candidate on Friday, so the base system, so we're still building modules for it. So it's, it's still got a long way to go with when we've got this huge library of modules, but we, on our website we have all the modules that we're going to make. and. Um, people will be able to just log in and download the modules to extend. And there'll be, there'll be everything. There'll be um, even QuickBook connectors to allow it to export financial data to QuickBooks and things. So it's a, it, I think the, the, the actual core system is quite powerful, the way that it's set out, and uh, because it can in integrate with other things. OK, so <clears throat> using it, moving on to other things. Um, I'll now just demonstrate the module system. Uh, as I've been saying, uh, the, the system can be extended by adding in a module. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually install a reports module. So we'll just browse for the reports. These modules are 
No. Well, um, what we're going to do with the ex with the modules is we're we're actually going to have a subscription service on our website that um, you can sign up and you get access to the whole library modules. You get access. You, th we're planning on a load of things, so you get access to like language translations, and they'll all be basically part of our membership. So um, the licensing is a one-off fee that you you pay for your license when you want it, and the subscription to get the modules is one off well it's not one off you can renew it when you want so if you want a module then you get your subscription download the modules and then when later on if you want more you get in another subscription and the subscription start it three months to a year so three six and twelve months subscriptions um, but I don't think there I think three months is um, going to be I think we're going to do 99 euros at three months so not going to be hugely expensive and you get your support with that as well so you get your support for uh, for installing it and you know help to set it all up. So, okay, so we'll just install um, the reports module. And this is a pretty basic module at the moment, but it'll show you uh, some of the potentials of um, of how this works. So we need to go back to modules just to enable that module. So you can see it's now listed, uh, and we just need to enable it. This will cause a, a refresh of the admin console because it has to auto load in all the new classes of the reports. All of the, the modules are supplied, um, they're all open source, all of the modules. So um, already we have about 19 modules and plugins available, including the base ones, and all of them are open source. So you can, if somebody wants to develop their own module, uh, there's a lot of references now to existing code that people can pick up um, and I think it's pretty easy I mean some of for instance our payment plugin we use we've got PayPal in here at the moment we've gone over the top with documentation on PayPal and so you can read through the code on the PayPal um, plugin and it, it's, it's very simple to see how it works um, and, and PayPal is probably the easiest to apply to any other payment provider because um, the PayPal integration is the simplest really so okay, so we'll go back to um, we'll actually now extend our modules window, and you can see that reports is now loaded. We have a check against the box. So if I now look in modules off the tree here, I have a reports option which wasn't here a moment ago. And if I click on that, it shows the reports that are loaded. There's only a few reports at the moment. So if we if we run something like um, one of the charts, now I'm not sure that these will actually be very good because. Um, well, it's, it's okay, and we've got some data, but this is the pie chart, so it shows you some of the charting capacity within the product. I'll show you the unit performance chart. So this is, uh, there's hardly any reservations on this at, this at the moment, so I can't really show you how this is, how this is going to work, but, uh, okay, so Moving on, let's show you now um, about the actual reservation management. Um, the reservation manager, what we've done is we've actually tried to apply some of the common things that you use in other applications like um, email. Uh, everybody knows that when they read their email, when it's got a little count at the side of it, it usually means that they've got three unread emails. And so what we've done is we've, we've applied the same logic to our reservation inbox as, as emails. So, and you can't really see it on this, but actually, some of these are bolded, that one's bolded and that one's unbolded. Uh, but when you see it on the GUI, on the, on the console, it's actually very easy to read and see straight away that you've got new reservations that have come in that you haven't viewed yet. And you haven't, um, so for an admin viewing this console, they can actually just take one quick look at this list and actually see, oh, well, I've got these three new reservations that I haven't viewed. Uh, and when you edit a reservation, It loads up the reservation details with a quick summary of the reservation. It, it shows you um, optional extras that, that are applied to the reservation, which there isn't any at the moment. It shows you uh, billing and uh, basically billing information of the total and the tax and option. Well, I think actually that is an optional extra. Oh no, there is an optional extra. Forty. There's one selected. Actually, I'm not sure that that was right, but anyway. Um, so it shows you the total price of the reservation and, um, and also the reservation that's, uh, that's, that's allocated, assigned to it. So this is, uh, 
I believe. You can see this in the calendar. Yeah. Now you can actually, on this page, we, we actually have a, you can change the reservation just by clicking on the calendar. So we can uncheck days that we don't, we, we don't want. Uh, and the, the, the actual system will um, do us like a, a live price quote at the bottom so you can actually see down here that it's actually calculating what I've been clicking on the, calculate, on the calendar, it's actually calculating the total cost of that reservation of what I've checked in the days. Um, and so I get a type of a preview before I hit the save button of what the reservation is going to cost. And so um, I guess the example here is if I was on the phone to my customer running through a, a reservation is that I've got a live um, price quote given to the customer. Before I hit the save button and apply that reservation, um, it's giving me a, a preview. So this, this is the new selection summary. No, it, well, it's done. It's done on the front end as well. It's fully automated no, on the front. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. You can create a brand new reservation from the front, from the back end. We can go back to reservations, and we have a uh, with block here. Now, at the moment, uh, again, this is the same, same thing that I was I, I tried to explain earlier. Is at the moment it has the property modules on it. When the hourly price modules go on, uh, things like uh, we'll just load up the block um, facility. Things like, um, in fact, block's not really a good example. Maybe, uh, uh, let me show you something that's maybe a bit more. Edit. This is probably a better example. When um, the hourly modules are installed, there will be a, an hourly date picker. So, so this calendar will change uh, depending on um, the functionality. So at the moment, it's clearly a daily um, reservation thing. Whereas, you know, for things that want to be reserved by the hour, we need to obviously show a planner where we can drag the dates out and select hour at a time. Now, we're already, we're already working on that. We already have the planner, actually, but it's not ready to go live yet. And that actually, allow, that actually shows um, three tabs with a day, week, and a month. But if you click on the day, it actually allows you to fine-tune the hours that you want to select. So you can slide the appointment up and down and... Um, it's, it's very easy. It's all, again, it's all drag and drop, and uh, so you can actually pick up a reservation and move it to somewhere else on the calendar. So it's, it's very nice. Um, we'll go back to, we'll move on to the next thing. Is, does anybody have any questions before we... Okay, shall I carry on? So um, we'll move on to the next thing now. So I've type of showing you reservations. Um, one thing that we uh, that always gets a bit of a wow factor is uh, we have a form designer built into the product that allows people to uh, change the, the the layout of the um, the application or the front end without doing any coding. Um, and this is really useful for end users that um, that that want to just change something or they want to turn off an, a page element on the front end. So. At the moment, our front end looks like this. This is the, the, um, the main unit details page, so it gives us all the information about the property. Um, we can do things like view our full prices, which I don't know whether I can show you. Yep. So you can see our prices. Um, we've got our carousel down here, which also loads up in a shadow box. It's not very clear on the projector, actually. Um, but if we want to change any of this layout, or, or maybe we want to turn off the calendar, you know, some people might not want to show a front-end calendar. We can actually do that from our form designer. Now, on the admin console, this is what our form designer looks like. And so we can just switch off that panel. We can click Save. And then on our front-end website, when we refresh it, uh, the calendar will have gone. Okay. It's tableless layout. It's all tableless layout. So it's all um, it's all been uh, validated. We're really careful with making sure it's W3C and you know uh, uh, basically um, we've tried to conform with everything without breaking anything. So uh, all of the um, all of the JavaScript as well. We use all XJS JavaScript. We won't use anything else. If uh, if there isn't a solution, then um, we'll make it ourselves. Uh, and there's a reason for that is because we don't. Uh, Joomla uses Mo, Mo tools, um, and we don't actually want to use Mo tools because um, Mo tools doesn't have all the functionality we want from it. 
but we also, if you start combining things like mode tools and jQuery, then you get problems usually with JavaScript. So XJS uh, is actually pretty good at staying completely isolated. Um, so it doesn't cause any conflicts. And because we stay pure, 100% XJS, we're not pulling in all types of different JavaScript libraries. And so if you view any of our source, you'll see it's just XJS that we're loading up for the calendars and the, and the carousel. Um, and, and we provide, I'll show you afterwards, but we provide all of this sample code as well. So things like the carousel, we give you, know, we give you all, we have a document a wiki, a developer wiki. So we give you all the sample code for all of this type of thing. So we're trying to encourage developers to, to do their own thing with this as well. There. Yeah, you can um, actually. There, um, there's end templates, so they're HTML with just view PHP. So there, there's no business logic in the templates at all, um, and it's all um, it's all a pattern, the MVC code pattern. So it's really easy for developers to uh, to take it. Understand, you know what they need to change. If they change a view, uh, and they they just refer to the controller to to change the code to to get the data for it. Um, all of the controller, in fact, yeah, all of our controller code is open, um, so people can view all of that. All of the views are open, so it's it's really simple for people to view that. So we get access to the, 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 the only code the only thing we we encrypt we do encrypt some files. We encrypt eleven files around about. Uh, just for the licensing, just to provide the flexible licensing for people that we don't have to give them a huge bill for this software so that we can give them a scaling price of, based on usability. Or, you know. So I'll just show you this form designer a bit more. Um, we'll add the calendar back in, um, but we can actually just drag this around to change the layout. So I'll drag the photo to the left. I'll put the, um, the selection details down here by my button. Uh, and then I'm going to save that. So you can see that um, my front end web page is with my image on the right before I refresh. And on my form designer, it's now on the left with the calendar at the top. Uh, we'll put the stars back at the top, actually. Can you change the colors? Um, you can. Well, um, we're actually going to add a, an editor. For, to edit. It's all, all in the CSS, actually. Um, so it would be easy just to um, add a CSS override to change any of the colors and the styles. However, later on, we're go this is one of the plans as well, is to, to add our CSS edit in there as well, so that you can... But we, we really, um, we appreciate that most end users actually don't want to edit the CSS. So um, most of the time, they, they just want to switch off a panel. Once they get the layout, the color scheme right to match their site, they may want to just switch off a panel or switch on something, or move something around to maybe change it and make it look a bit fresh. So this is why we've done this. So. Let's just save that, and then we'll go back to the front end, and we'll just refresh this. And you can see that the new layout will be reflected. So image on the left, calendar on the right. I've moved the selection information down above the book now button. So from an end user point of view, it's really nice to be able to just, you can, you can give them this package. Uh, um, we're pretty confident that we've, we've, um, we've done some usability testing, and uh, it's applying things like the, the uh, email rules to the reservation where people can see the reservations coming in um, and the form designer, we're, most people you know, can pick that up straight away once they've been shown it, they, they know it. Because um, drag and drop, it, the, the only problem is with drag and drop now is we found is that it doesn't occur to people with a web application to actually uh, pick up things and drag and drop them. So we've had to do a few videos and tutorials just to uh, to show them these things. I think it's becoming more common now, but you know people uh, people don't expect it. So, um, okay. Well, anything else I can show you? Can you go through the process of, of front end? Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so um, we have a, I'll start right from the very beginning actually, so you can see this working. So we'll go back to the Joomla homepage. Uh, this, is, this is actually um, uh, just a, a module that's available that you can download with it. So it's just a Joomla module. Um, 
it comes with a, an advanced search built in already that, that's modular based. Um, so it looks at what modules have been installed. And for instance, it looks here that there's a, if there's a Google Maps, it, um, if, if Google Maps is installed, and it will add in the, the, the option to search on just map. Um, and these, these parameters are defined actually in the, um, the, the module plugin. So um, <coughs> the module, the, the, the ad advanced search doesn't have these hard coded into it. When you, we create a module, we add in the extra property that says, oh, we want to add something into the advanced search, and then that adds the field into the advanced search. So you can do text search as well? We can do text search. I, I, I mean, basically, everything on ResMania is in the database, even to the point where um, I'll just go back to the form design, uh, go back to the unit, and I'll just explain that um, these, these fields that you see here, um, these are actually all defined in the database. Uh, they're all JSON. Um, they're XJS, but they take their definition from the field from, an, from a JSON um, entry that's defined in the database. So when we create um, the new unit types, like for a car, we can actually create a brand new form that has things like a drop down for the number of seats, the amount of luggage space, or um, you know really specific parameters, like your parameters for your equipment. We can define all of the specific drop downs exactly as your requirements. You know, you might have. Um, you know, lenses and things like that that have, so. so that's no, you can do it, you can do it. Um, again, it's, I think um, once the vehicle plugin and module is made, then it'll, that will all be available. You'll be able to, to get that and actually see and compare it with the, 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 the vehicle module is actually gonna be a type of, um, it's going to be a defining point, and it's, we're working on it now, and it'll be available at the end of next month. And what it will, that will give us all the hourly options and the date picker that I've explained. Now, that, because of that, it will allow us to apply the reservation system to other things like people and equipment, because all of those, the planner is then integrated, which is the, the hard work done. Um, so let's go back to the front end, and I'll just run through all of this... Um, the process. Now I'm not going to enter any dates into the date picker, although I could. I'm just going to hit the OK button just to get the list so that you can see the workflow of how this treats it if I haven't defined dates for instance. You can see that there's no cr criteria um, defined. So uh, it's basically returning back all the rental items. Um, and I'm going to go to more info, which you've just seen. So I can view the properties of the item I want to rent. Um, and I'm actually going to click on the, um, the Book Now button. You can actually see that in my selection information here, which is a panel, um, so I don't have to have this. If I don't want to, I can switch it off. I'm going to click on Book Now, and it, it knows there's no dates selected. So it now prompts me that I've got to select some dates from my rental. Um, if we'd done the dates right at the very start on the search module, it wouldn't prompt me we'd go straight on and be able to book the item. But because I haven't done it, it's basically stopped me at that point and said, you've got to put in some dates. So we'll, we'll just pick some dates. And you can see on our date picker, um, we have some dates that are already reservations on the back end that are confirmed and they're not allowed. So we'll, we'll put in some dates that... Um, I think that it should be okay, 21st to the 20th. And, and we'll click on okay. It's not very easy to see, actually, but this is actually a shadow box. Um, so you can actually see uh, the rest of the website, but it's basically greyed out. So I'll click on OK, and it does now um, a check using Ajax. Um, and if it's OK, then it doesn't prompt the user for you know, any other action. And now you can see it's given us a price quote. So in our selection information, we've got um, a total price for this selection. And we've got an edit button, so if we want to edit those dates, um, but we can now carry on to book the item if we want. Or, or we can add it to a cart. We, we actually have a cart built into the system already, um, so you can actually add in multiple items and build up your order with all of your items that you want to reserve. So if, you, if let's say you added in our car reservation, uh, the plugins, you could actually book a hotel and a car at the same time and add those both to your cart and then pay, pay for them right at the very end. So. Um, Let's just create a test user. Um, we do have a, a login option, so you can 
you can uh, existing users can log in now, or, or we can register as a new user. Um, we've got things like cap cap uh, recapture, which is um, integrated already. So uh, it's um. Yeah, it's, it's um, actually on the, the admin console. You have an option to turn off your integration. So in here, um, you can, if we go into the Joomla tab, you can actually see we've got our Joomla integration on and uh, user registration. So one of the users I created earlier, let's just load up the Joomla admin, was this one. Test testy with the username of Tess and so we can probably, I think, just use test testy test. And I think it was password. And just log in. So you can see now we get to our summary page. I'm not sure why this is squashed up at the moment, but uh, it should be the full page. But it's minor at the moment. Um, basically. Um, it gives us our reservation and to shows us our to total, and it's showing us optional extras as well that we have that um, that are available on the reservation. I should explain as well is that this is actually a beta version that I have here and not the release candidate, so it's a little bit older because I couldn't update earlier because of the internet problems. When we got in here, um, it was too late to update, <laughs> so this is slightly old, but um, it shows you things like breakfast, which should show you the euro sign on it which I believe is fixed in the latest version, so it should show you the price. So it's showing you that breakfast for my selected reservation from the 21st to the 28th is 35 euros, and I can choose how many breakfasts I want. So if I've got a reservation for two people, that would be 775, and you can see it adds that to the total. And this is a bit more, um, it's a bit slicker in, in the, uh, the latest release. It's got the pound sign, it explains what this means and things like that. Um, we have two payment modules. We have a save and pay later. Um, the save just allows you just to basically store it. And uh, it, you can change this. Uh, all of these titles like these uh, are defined in our language files. So uh, I can show you that now, actually. Um, the system is multilingual. It supports uh, UTF-8, and it has its own language system that integrates with uh, Joomla or, and switches on based on... Um, the Joomla selection, language selection that it detects. So um, if we go into our language manager under config, you can see at the moment we have uh, English, French and uh, Russian. And the reason why we did those three is um, Russian's got a got Cyrillic character set, so it's really good, it's not Latin. So it's a really good test of, uh, of, of making sure the system can cope with other translations. And I'll, and I'll actually show you that. So we'll edit the main translation file and you can see that the Russian language is in the file. And these are just, they're just tags. So, um, for instance, calendar, wherever it uses calendar, uh, this is the translation for it. Um, and so it's, it's simple for people to adjust this. This is not PHP code. A lot, uh, some of the older um, Joomla extensions I've used, this has been a PHP file. And um, if you do something wrong in it, the whole system froze a, froze a wobbly and crashes. So these are actually any files that we, we parse in any file, and so they're not PHP code. They're, there's a bit more resilience in it against uh, people doing something wrong or putting in a character that, um, that's not supported. Okay, so uh, back to the front end. So the point is, is you can change things like save reservation and pay later, and you could change that to say something like, um, save my reservation and contact me by telephone to take my payment or something like that because some people don't want to pay by the credit card via the website. So you could change the title of that. Um, so we'll, we'll just do accept and proceed to payment now, which will just finish the reservation and save it. At this point, it generates emails that go out to the system admin. And this page, reservation complete, is actually an adjustable page in the admin console. Uh, under pages, this one here is actually the page that adjusts um, the uh, that final message. And these are all language dependent again. Um, you can choose the, the language, the translation for that page. So if I want to do it in French, reservation effectué avec succès, something like that. 
and I'm not even going to try and translate the Russian one. <laughs> so, uh, so everything is multilingual. Uh, everything that needs to be multilingual. So uh, if I take you back to the unit details, uh, the same thing applies for the unit details. We have our unit language field that drops down here. And uh, we can, if we change that to French, it will load up the, the French translation of that. Now that's actually... Um, this, is a, this is a long time bug with this. This has been fixed now, but I think... So you can see, uh, yeah, this would be my admin constant. My admin language is set to English, so the field names are exactly the same for the admin. But actually, this is the translations, or should be the translations in French. I don't know whether it is or not. But anyway, so that's how it would work. Um, so the front end, let's go back to the front end. Um, that was the complete reservation Padlock lock is actually open. Um, these are locked, if you can see here. Uh, so this is confirmed on the calendar. It wouldn't be allowed to be rebooked. Uh, but this one is actually, because there's no payment been taken, uh, is still unlocked. So it could be overbooked on the front end until the payment's been made or it's been confirmed. Uh, I'll show you some of the nice features of XJS. Um, you can actually filter all these lists. Uh, you can ascend them and you can do filters and things like that. So we can actually turn off things like user ID, uh, unit ID, first name. Um, you can put in a filter and a search filter of all your reservations. So we could filter on, let's just take maybe take one of those numbers. I'm not sure I'll be able to do this, but I'll try. 103, 105. Four, five, six, one, four, five, six. And it should do an active filter. Of, so if you've got, a, <laughs> it's not letting me down. <laughs> Is it possible to about this payment process? Means uh, that um, all reservations are, uh, uh, let's say, for free. Yeah, yeah, you could. Um, you could actually remove the um, the PayPal. Plugin, so we could turn off the PayPal plugin. I'll actually. Complete reservations are confirmed reservations. Um, What's the difference? Yeah, we could do that. I mean, basically, uh, the th that um, I will show you in the plugins actually, because that is a plugin. So we have uh, this one. Pay later is the plugin I showed you a moment ago, which was the one that allowed you to basically save the reservation. Now, the the code for that pay later module is just a small amount of code. And it, it has an update method in it. So we could just change that and do pay later, but auto confirm. So we could create a new module from that one just by duplicating the code and just creating one that auto confirmed your reservation. And, and Is it possible to uh, treat the request of the user as a, let's say, a wish to a wish a list? Request yeah. Means, uh, that, um, he, he wants to reserve this, uh, let's say, on Monday. Yeah. And he, so he actually asks for it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, when the reservation is complete, yeah. It's free. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, in the back end, uh, is, there's decided is it okay or not? Yeah. Or do we, let's say, give him Tuesday instead okay. of Monday? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, is this possible? Yeah, this is possible. Well, um, Actually, the uh, the system I've just demonstrated now with um, let's go back to the reservations. So actually, I'm thinking about appointments. Of the okay. Yep. Okay. So these appointments are booking of the doctor. Okay. It's for free. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Later you pay, but first it's for free. Okay. <laughs> and uh, some some want to let's say a uh, front end to to book. Yeah. The real the real appointment. Yeah. And some people want uh, that it's only a wish, and at the back end, these people decide yeah. what um, appointment they 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 get. I think um, I think that the system as it is now would pretty much do that. I think that the, the you first of all we need the hourly 
option to be yes, able to. Sure, for sure. But uh, we've actually been asked for this already, actually, for psychiatrists. So I think that this would be something that's uh, going to appear almost directly after the vehicle um, module once, and then uh, we'll be doing people resource booking for people, basically. And uh, but I think that these that point that you've just raised of doing, um, I think that it's pretty much fine tuning on one of the plugins. Uh, I think we already have the system there. It, maybe it's just um, changing the, uh, the that pay later module I've shown you plugin to maybe auto confirm the reservation to start with. But the the admin, and this is the, I think your question is the admin can change that reservation and move it to a different day or a different time slot. But I guess what we need to do is um, in that scenario maybe send out a confirmation email sure. when the admin changes that. Yes. So I think. Uh, this would be part of the unit type to define the field that has maybe a button that says, you know, do you want to send an email to the to the to the customer to confirm that? But I, I don't see any issue with that at all. I think it's uh, well, obviously we need to just define exactly the steps of what you want to do. But I, it's it's something that's uh, we we want to do that definitely. So, um, any more questions? Okay, go on then. Yep. Um, is there the, the, the search is that you integrated into the Jira search or can it directly be via plugins which are in the Jira search? Um, I don't see why you couldn't write a plugin um, just to integrate with Joomla search, to be quite honest, because all of our data is in the, uh, we use the Joomla database um, to, so, so. We, we actually, um, our connector that's in Joomla reads the Joomla database settings and uses that database to install its own database. Um, so, you, you know, in the plugin, the Joomla plugin for the search bot, I think it is, the search man bot, you can define which database and you can put your query in for which tables you're going to scan. So. SEF, do you, do you see that one? Yeah, okay, we, um, it supports native Joomla SEF at the moment, um, and there is an SEF module um, which is available for Joomla, but it's this native SEF. Uh, it really wouldn't be difficult to apply that to SH404 or Arto. Um, I think uh, we've already written SH404 plugins before for our old products. I think um, it, it's, SH404 is really simple. To, Block off times from a product without creating a reservation? Uh, yes, you can, but not without creating a reservation. Um, there's a reason for that, is because if you want to unblock it, you need to be able to see it. Um, you can actually, I think you can apply a filter, I'm just thinking, uh, I think we can apply a filter that doesn't show blocked. Um, or certainly that was something we were going to add anyway. If, I'm, if we haven't added it now, maybe. Um, Oh yeah, this is it. You can actually filter, actually blocked um, units come up with a user ID of zero because the zero, because the, they're a system, they've been blocked by the system, okay? Now, um, you can actually, they've got a last name of system actually, you can see that here. So you can actually filter and put, a, I think you can put a filter on here. I don't know, the, but maybe it's something like... Is it quite quick to, uh, to create that just so they don't appear? Basically, if we were renting we know we yeah well, as soon as it's confirmed it won't be available on the calendar as soon as the the booking at the moment these are unconfirmed um, and I can show you this actually on the if we go into unit uh, this one Villa blue now there is a full calendar on the for the and you can actually see um, reservations on this uh, the ones the blue ones are actually our unit uh, I don't know what those are actually, but in here, if we hover over the dates, it actually tells us up in the right-hand corner it, what the reservation is. Yeah. Um, so this is type of a quick look yeah. at your reservations, and it can show you what. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, the the planner, um, which I guess is probably more the planner is really nice. Yeah. Um, it's got some really nice features like uh, being able to view a whole month and you know see things. And, uh, and it'd be nice to just be able to save it from you know, the third to the seventh or something. You just, yeah. just block it, just give a quick note and then create that reservation. Uh, actually, 
the, the planner allows us to put um, a blocking straight into the calendar. Um, we can we can literally uh, double click on the calendar and actually add an event, and it creates it as a. So uh, it's it's even more um, flexible, and you'll you'll see that in about a month's time. I mean, basically, the planner's all finished, but it's the surrounding mechanism that controls it all that we're working on now. Is there any way of categorising these units? Yeah, no, no. Cat there's a category. Um, it's multi-level category. I'll go into here. It's a module. Okay. It's a standard base module. Um, we'll define some categories. Let's just put in a few. Um, let's just add in a few basic ones, and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so we'll just rename a couple of these. Uh, this is okay. This is probably. Um, it should load up the language, but I guess this is uh, this is not good really. The categories can be defined like this. I mean, basically, uh, you should be able to rename them, which you can't do in my version. I'll just show you that it's actually telling me that I should update down here. So we actually have an in-product update, which if I click on it, it tells me my uh, you have the latest available. I guess I've lost my internet. I have lost my internet connection because it should actually tell me because I don't have the latest version at all. I sh it should show me the change log for that. But uh, I can actually do an in-product update here, and it will download the new core and install it and upgrade everything. So it's simple for users to do. Um, going back to categories, uh, once we've defined some categories and we've renamed them, I'm really uh, it's a real shame that that doesn't work, so I can't show you that. Let's just just check. Yeah, yeah, basically. Uh, again, drag and drop, you move them around to how you want to set up all your categories. Um, once you've defined them in um, here, let's put uh, that one as a subcategory there. Once you've defined your categories here, in your unit, um, you go into categories in here and you can basically check the boxes of what the item is a member of which of the category that's in. So uh, it would be a bit easier to see if I could rename them, but you would see that uh, maybe if this was lenses, I could apply it to lenses. If it was for one specific camera, you could you can add it to any category at any depth. So it's multiple categories, multiple depth. Then on the front end website, we'll just show, I'll just show you in the advanced search. Is um, the advanced search shows you the categories, and that should load up, and uh, you can see that actually we can search on uh, only items in that category. Is there a way you can sort of browse and drill down into those categories as well? Almost sort of about e commerce site. Uh, no. Is this not <laughs> is this not browsing down? No, uh, I'd take it so you've got a, a, a page that's this is everything and then you go right I want okay. uh, camera projects and then I want I think um uh, HD cameras and then I want more contact buttons and Okay. Yeah, I guess to be quite honest, um, this is all part of the categories module. It's a separate item of code. It's not something that's core. It, it would be easy to just take that part of code, just make the modifications to that. Um, I could give you a quick show you the code if you like and the structure of the module. If, yeah. It is. It's, it's, it's in there, and you can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, we can we can help you with that and advise you how you want to do that. So, uh, okay. Just going back to the licensing, it's um, one license key per rental item. Let me show you. So if you've got blue and blue red, I need a license for each blue. I need a license per. Well, you get one for free. So you, get, you have to buy a 2,000 room license. Yeah, it's, but um, actually our cost for that is actually, um, I, I don't think we're that expensive. I think it's, uh, it's relative to the size of the business. A, maybe a 2,000 room hotel is actually a really big business. And so I think our cost for a 2,000 room license, and I'll show you actually on our website, is, uh, if I can get to our website that is, Oh no, I can't get to our website. 
But I think uh, maybe an unlimited pack is 2,000 euros. Um, for a 10 pack is 90, for 150 is something like, um, or something like 150 for 50 units. So uh, the price gets cheaper the more you buy. For 500 units is something like 299 euros. So it's, I think we've, we've targeted... It's a scaled price. It's a scaled price. The more you buy, the cheaper it gets. Um, and we also have uh, reseller deals that people can... Yeah, so you, you are running a smaller business within, especially kind of, kind of like mine, uh, it's so difficult to really sell it at a price when I go against a thousand bucks. No, of course, yeah. Especially if you've got a massage place, and it's not yeah. driving a small amount of product. And it's like, well, I'm sorry, it's not yeah. doing it. Yeah. I think uh, the, other, the other thing is, well, maybe um, for people like yourself that are a solutions provider, is um, we, do have, um, we do have different methods of, um, of allowing you to resell our license keys. So we can, um, for, for yourself, you can sign up to a deal with us and, um, and basically resell our keys on at the price that you want to sell them on at. And you can pre-buy them from us or um, we do type of affiliate. Because the license keys can be provided, we can actually um, we have an automated way that you can actually log into the website and generate the keys yourself. So uh, it's quite attractive for other for resellers and partners to to be able to log in and do this. You do um, if I've got the website, the production site up and I've got the development site and I've got the service office. Yeah. Uh, what's the situation of the license today? I've got this 50 sample. Well no, we'll give you a local host key for that. Yeah. A, an IP address or something. Um, I think we can probably come to an arrangement where we, actually um, our license when, our actually our actual license covers up to five domains for one of those keys. Uh, generally, you get one production domain, and uh, the rest of them we can give you as development domains. So if you had a development one, you'd get. Really, not a problem. We give you a key with the with the live key in it, and also that t development domain is part of it. So, um, really, uh, don't know at the moment. Can't tell you. I need to think about that and have a look at our licensing. And so, I, I, th I think um, I think we're pretty flexible on that. To be quite honest, I mean, we're, we we operate. We do operate on trust. I mean, we do have to lock it down a little bit because we're giving it away for free and, and um, we're, we're encouraging people to use it. But uh, things like subdomains, we're, we're type of, I think we're pretty flexible on it. So. No, none at all. No cool home stuff. Um, the, the actual part that's encrypted is literally just for protecting our licensing. Um, so. It's actually um, it's Iron Key or Zend. Uh, what it will do is it will detect what um, um, engine you've got, and it'll just pull down the one that that's, that works for you. So the installer is actually pretty um, pretty clever little installer. It's taken us a while to develop and get iron out the bugs because it actually does a lot of checks. It checks all the prerequisites and stuff. Because uh, actually this needs InnoDB, which uh, is things like Tiana, Tianda, Dioscorys Tianda now uses. And you, you're now starting to see this on a lot of uh, bigger applications. And uh, InnoDB gives you things like uh, foreign key. Um, it gives you foreign key support. And uh, there's transaction, um, it's, it's fully transaction, um, tra transaction based. So you can do rollbacks and things. If a, if a transaction fails, you can roll it back. So it's much nicer. So that's a, I'm a little bit about that installment. The, the, Okay, the the, insta the installer. Well, we, we've we've got um, the installer. You just download the Joomla extension, and the easiest thing to do is just run it first of all, and it will go out and tell you what you've got uh, installed. Uh, if I had an internet connection, I could show you, but I've dropped off. No. Completely, completely uh, Joomla based. You just run it, um, and it's uh, it, it really should be very simple for you to do. Yeah, well, um, that's the only thing is obviously uh, your hosting provider. We we provide, uh, excuse me. Um, it has to have PHP five point two point five or above because of the Zen framework requirements. Um, it has to have a certain DB revision because of InnoDB support on MySQL and um, and mainly the other one is IamCube uh, or 
end optimizer. And if they're yeah, if they're, they're 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 generally both of those are very easy to load actually, Zend or Arm Cube, and uh, you know they're two minute. Just add the line to the PHP dot any re restart Apache and that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Most people run it now. It's standard, so it's really not usually an issue. So uh, just to show you, this is running on Drupal. Uh, this is actually Drupal, so you can actually see uh, the same things. Uh, if we go into administer, you can actually see Resmania in here under administer, and you can see Resmania load up inside Drupal. So just to show you, this is actually the same code base, just with the Drupal module. We could do. This. I, I was sitting here, I was sort of tapping the settings a couple of times. It, the, general, the, the initial load is yeah. the slowest part of it, yeah. um, mainly because it loads up all the JavaScript libraries. Yeah. Um, but once it's loaded that, actually, uh, uh, and I think, I mean, I've used it on a live website, yeah. and actually uh, it's faster than most applications I've ever used because all of the requests are actually going on in the background. So when you're clicking on a tab, it sends out the AJAX request to do that. You can actually see we have a maximize and minimize button on this. So you can, uh, and this works the same on both um, the Joomla and Drupal uh, from the home page. You can explode it out so you, if you can maximize your screen size, uh, which is really important, I think, these days. So, uh, uh, no. What? I think um, what we want to do, actually, and this is what I've, I've been thinking, is um, at the moment we have optional extras. So we have, if we go into modules, we have uh, extras. Now, uh, this is OK, but these are a type of um, extras to the reservation. So in this situation, breakfast is a really good optional extra. You can define it as an item that's added to the reservation. But what I want to do is take a rental item and be able to bundle the two items together as an item. So if you, know, if you rent a camera, like in your case, a tripod is an extra item that can be selected at the same time. Would, would you be able so, to set a price like you really I think uh, they, what they should be is they should actually be listed as individual rental items in here um, that have their own properties and own fields. And, but they can, on the front end, maybe they're related. We can relate the items together. Yeah. I think uh, at the moment um, we, we actually on our older products uh, we had um, special units which weren't actually units they were virtual units so they had a number of assigned to them you could create the item uh, with a name with five of those the only problem is that, that we found is that tracking them later on and doing things like reports because they were a virtual item was a absolute pain. So we've actually said now that basically all items um, will always be a physical uh, entry in here. They'll, so if you had five tripods, you would have to create five tripods in here. Now I think what we will do is actually up here is we'll put a clone button on here and you can create one and then clone it many times. Yeah. You don't want five of those. You don't want ten of those coming back on the list. Yeah, that's good. that's a good point actually, and that's a good point for us to, to deal with actually. Maybe 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 we can uh, we can think of an extra field there to like group an item together so that you have to define the items in the list as separate items, but then you can actually say um, group these as one item for the front end, yeah. and that maybe there's a selection somewhere on from. I think so. Well, yeah, I think so. A hidden field would so be. Yeah. 
I think. Yeah, how are you going to how are you going to control all of those? Well, that's a good point, and that's a, that will be something that comes up with the vehicle plugin because vehicles have got registrations, and so it will be something that we definitely uh, we will deal with very shortly. So, uh, okay. Well, I think no, the end of next month for the beta version of that, which we'll be giving out the beta for free to you know just get people to test and stuff like that. Um, it'll be just available on the site. So, yeah, I think um, we obviously want people's feedback, and I think it's important as well to, to not. It won't be. Uh, it will be released as a beta for people like yourself to see before it goes production, and um, it'll obviously take a lot. I think this is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the 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 creating of them is um, the probably the most tricky part with our application is actually XJS um, because um, XJS XJS is not difficult, but it takes a bit of skill just to know the interface because it our interface reads in uh, JSON format, so basically it does request for the data uh, as an AJAX request. It gets the definition of the field back, and then the J JavaScript reads that in and goes, okay, it's a text field, render this field so you know because that's stored in the database as a JSON syntax so I think that that's probably the most difficult for most people but to be quite honest most modules don't even use that because the module is defined for that specific use um, generally the data isn't in the database for the module it's usually hard-coded if, if you want I could show you or we could I could do this by email later on with you